Today, are you angry, lonely, or seeking comfort? We decode the secret language of cravings. The salty, crunchy cravings, that's a huge one. And reveal what it says about your emotions. Plus, Dr. Oz reveals what to eat when your scale is stuck. How long has it been stuck like that? It's been stuck a long time. A long time. <laughs> Customize your foods to finally lose weight. Coming up next on Dr. Oz. Welcome to the show. Despite doing everything right, your scale is not moving. You're eating healthy, you're exercising, but you are not seeing the results. Today, there is help. Nutritionist and author Haley Pomeroy is here to tell us what to eat when your scale is stuck. Welcome back to the show, Haley. Thank Thanks you for so being much here. For having me. <laughs> right, if you can, why is this a big issue for so many women? Why does that scale get stuck? I think as women, we so focus on wanting to lose weight instead of focusing on why the scale's stuck and what to eat about it. Uh, the burn is about micro repair, about getting to the reasons why weight loss has become difficult. I look at things like inflammation in my clinic, digestive issues in my clinic, also hormone-based weight loss resistance. And we find targeted foods and micronutrients to burn through those plateaus. Be specific with me. Yes. How do you actually unlock the scale so it starts to move again? Yeah, so this, what I brought here today, the burn, is a three-day, five-day, and 10-day nutrition plan that I actually use in my clinics for the last 21 years. And we use soups, teas, smoothies, and incredibly delicious food to burn through those barriers to success. It's the why we've got to get rid of, even more importantly than the weight, so that we can speed up the metabolism. Right, so let's get to it. So the question is again, how do you know which reason is responsible for your scale being stuck? We're going to figure it out right now. We're going to start with inflammation. Let me ask you this. Does this sound like you? Is your face puffy? Are your cheekbones missing in action? Having trouble getting your rings off at night? Does your fat settle around your lower back, hanging over your pants, muffin top style? You may have inflammation. The foods you're eating trigger inflammation. When your body senses inflammation, it sends out a distress signal that says, stop burning fat, and it holds onto fluid. That's why your face looks puffy and your cheekbones disappear. Today, Haley is gonna show you how to burn past the inflammation barrier that's keeping your scale stuck. Kendra says the reason her scale is stuck is inflammation. Why do you think that? Well, my face is puffy. My lower legs, um, they're swollen. When I put socks on, I get the marks around. I can't put my shoes on. My lower back might hurt a little bit. How long has it been stuck like that? It's been stuck a long time. A long time? <laughs> a long time. <laughs> All right, well, I won't pry anymore. So, <laughs> Kelly, how does Kendra and so many other women like her who think inflammation is the main reason their scale is stuck get help? So what we want to do is we want to use targeted foods in a systematic plan to fix the why, the why inflammation is plaguing your body. And, and it, inflammation can be a big one to really hold on to weight. Mm -hmm. We're going to use foods like raw walnuts. This is amazing. We use a lot of celery seed, cranberries. Um, I love to use parsley. We use a tea that we use parsley during the day with your meals to help you get the micronutrients for repair. And then one of my favorites when there's inflammation is we make a soup and we add daikon radish to it. It's really good for swelling. And then there's a whole lot of incredible recipes and foods around some of these targeted ingredients. It can help. Really Have you ever tried that. daikon before? You ever seen it before? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of friends who are Korean, and so they tell me that it's actually something that folks say in Korea. That, you know, they say if you say to someone that you have daikon legs, yes. right, it's not a compliment. <laughs> right? But you can sort of see why. They're not the most attractive of all vegetables. How do you eat these things? So I add them in a soup. And with the eye burn, which is a three-day plan, what we do is we have the soup with every lunch and dinner. And it really helps to make the soup actually have a very creamy texture, and it's, it's very good. What I do is I make a big batch of this anti-inflammatory soup. I freeze it up, put it in the freezer, and if you taste it, it's great. Oh, she's doing that. So literally, you uh, you, so you make them once a week or once a month? I do, and the eye burn is three days. Look at the trepidation here. <laughs> Thank you for the confidence, Kendra. You know, Dr. Oz, a lot can happen to do damage to Let's, our I, body. I, I've got to make sure I get this perfectly. Are you okay? <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Mm-hmm, that's good. <laughs> that's about as much of a rousing endorsement I'm going to get out of Kendra. 
<laughs> right. You're going to be even more in love with the way your legs look afterwards, <laughs> okay. right? So I interrupted you. I'm sorry. So no, you... that's okay. So this is a three-day plan. Three days sounds like a very short amount of time, but this is micro repair. So just if I had cardiovascular disease, Dr. Oz, I wouldn't go see an OBGYN. I would see you, a cardiologist, a specialist. So we want to specialize every nutrition plan for you to figure out why your scale's stuck. And we use all of these foods to do so. Okay. Would that be reasonable as a first step? Yes. You probably do just about anything, frankly. But I, I mean, yeah, this is, yeah, this is, <laughs> but, but you know, Haley has a huge practice, takes care of a lot of folks, and I think breaking it out down this way makes a lot of sense. So for infl inflammation, we're gonna eat these kinds of foods, yes. in including the soup. Okay. And right. you'd have that with lunch and with dinner, but also a lot of incredible, amazing recipes to go with it. Okay. We'll put those all on drroz.com as well. All right, the next reason your scale is stuck is digestion. See if this sounds familiar. Do you get heartburn and feel bloated after meals? Do you have skin flare-ups? Or does your tongue have a white coat? Do you have brain fog? The cause could be digestion. You're digesting too slowly, which in turn slows down, even stops the production of enzymes that break down nutrients from your food. Your body says overload, don't burn fat, and stores it instead. And that's why your scale is stuck. Danny's scale was stuck at 185 pounds because of her, as of her digestion issues. Now, she followed Haley's plan. She's never met Haley. This isn't careful because you'll be really proud of this. Danny's lost 40 pounds in six months. Danny, please join us. You. you're amazing you look thank fantastic you very much thank you so i understand you're a pretty tough critic yes i uh, am you've tried a lot of things Absolutely. things that did not work for you what is it that happened to catch you with Haley's program um i really enjoyed the wholesome ingredients that she has in all of her plans and i think that that's what really caught my attention i wanted to feel my body in the right way now Haley, from your perspective i hear see how you get emotional <laughs> now about this so proud of her <laughs> thank you when, when you see someone who's got a digestion problem versus an inflammation issue yeah you okay yes i, I am <laughs> You know, it is very emotional for us because we spend our whole lives trying to help. And when Absolutely. you see this, it's very, very emotional for us as well. Yes. Uh, when you see someone with a digestion issue, rather than, for example, an inflammation issue as Kendra had, yes. what changes? What do you feed them differently? So what happens is with individuals like this, it's not what you eat, it's what you actually absorb that's going to enhance the metabolism. And if digestion is off, your body acts as a barrier. So it doesn't matter what incredibly delicious, amazing, healthy foods you eat. And I know reading your story, I got a chance to, we talked a lot about kind of getting your body back and after pregnancy and children and yes. and and I think especially with women it's so important that we actually heal through a process like that and so we use targeted foods I had her do you know these incredible smoothies in the morning do you still like them? Delicious. Oh, I still good. Use them yes good and we use uh, you know lemons and apples green apples the bitter the tartness in the green apple really helps stimulate the digestion and again you can take food in but if you don't break that food down into micronutrients true repair doesn't happen and then you just end up on another diet and that doesn't work. So just to be clear, in the mornings to start off, you'd have a lot of citrus, I see. Yes. The apple, this is, that's, that's lemon or? Lemon, lemon, yeah. And then we have pumpkin seeds, which is really also anti-parasitic, which can be really important from a digestive perspective. Basil, which helps the liver enzymes. We have cucumbers. And again, the tartness in the apple, it really seems to stimulate the digestion so that, you know, if you're investing in this really healthy food, we start the day off with this incredible smoothie so that you can actually access the repair, access fixing the why. Does it look familiar to you? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, <laughs> describe the taste, everybody. I'm going to taste it for the first well, time. Well, it's nutty because of the chia seeds and the pumpkins, and then you get the acidity from the lemon, which I love. <laughs> Fragrant basil. It's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> Didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah. It's got a kick. Yeah. yeah. It has a kick. <laughs> we go after the fat. You know when you can grab onto your belly? Sorry, guys. Yeah. You can really grab onto it, but it's the stuff that's really hard to get rid of. And you, you have a couple other high fiber uh, options here. Chiwi, you mentioned. This is flaxseed. It is flaxseed. And in the deburn, we do also a soup mm -hmm. with the meals to help access again those nutrients. We use ginger and we use red cabbage. So many times people talk about cabbage being bloating and things like that. You want the cruciferous vegetables, but the red cabbage has a unique phytonutrient and you get a really nice flat, as you can see, <laughs> belly. <laughs> I'm gonna wash this down. <laughs> it's good, Dr. Haas. <laughs> it does have a kick, that's the right word for it. it. Right, let's get to the final reason your scale is stuck. It's your hormones. Is your hair and skin dry to the point of cracking? 
is fat showing up and bulging out in places you've never had it before, to the point where your clothes no longer fit? Are you eating lots of sugar and carbs, which make you feel great, until you crash later on and nap? It might be your hormones. Hormonal imbalances create rogue fat cells that take on a life of their own, triggering the production of more hormones, which in turn causes your body to store fat more aggressively. That's why your scale is stuck. Karina thinks that the reason her scale is stuck is her hormones. Why do you think that? How long have you been stuck for? Well, I had a baby 15 months ago. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And basically for the last year, my scale hasn't moved an ounce. It's stuck. <laughs> Doesn't move at all. Doesn't uh, move at all. What should women like Karina be looking for? What is it about the hormones that are holding them back? Absolutely. Well, I would say in my clinical practice, hormone-based weight loss resistance is something that gets so many women stuck. Whether it's menopause, premenopause, syndrome X, the beautiful birth of a child, so many times the body resets its metabolism at a slower rate. And so I use 10 days of micro repair to really nurture the hormones. We use incredibly healthy fats like coconut oil, but the key here is to couple it with a citrus like grapefruit. Grapefruit really helps and supports the liver so that you can actually break down those fats. And the fat that we're holding on to in our body is this treasure chest. Our body actually manufactures hormones through that. Yeah. Mood, energy, all kinds of things. So this, this can be really beneficial and it's only 10 days. Yeah. And what do you have over here? So we have a couple of good things. This is sweet potatoes, well yams. The darker the golden, the darker the orange and the um, darker the skin, the more the phytonutrient to help repair. One of our soups that we do, because there's a soup, a tea and a smoothie with each of these burn plans and amazing food. One of the soups uh, focuses on this. We also have some amazing dandelion root. And dandelion root as a tea, which you'll do with each meal, really helps. We actually have some over here. Have you ever had dandelion before? No, never. I, I thought we'd <laughs> it's have some. It's a nutty here. taste. It's good. Yeah, the last, it's... last nutty tasting I tasted and I'm still <laughs> suffering from it. Here, you take this. This time you go first. I did my, my job. You wouldn't be complaining Cheers. your scale was stuck, Dr. Oz. <laughs> And, and what is it about the dandelion tea that you like so much? This is good. So dandelion's a tonifying for the liver. And the liver is actually what makes our hormones bioavailable. Adiponectin, leptin, all of the estrogens that the fat cells can produce as well. The liver helps our body flush out the ones that aren't good for us and create a homeostasis or a balance for the ones that are good for us, that give us the energy, that allow us to sleep deeply. Marina, thank you for joining us. Thank Listen, you. for all the folks out there who find yourselves in this, identify which of those reasons you're, you're holding on the fat and address it. Taylor, wonderful yes, advice as always. So a lot of her advice is on DrOz.com and her new book, The Burn, is out now. Check it out. We'll be right back. <laughs> Dr. Oz wants to know, what's your number one metabolism boosting tip? Every morning I drink a tall glass of cold water. It's better than coffee. It gets my metabolism going and wakes me up. Give it a shot. Share your tip on Facebook.com slash Dr. Oz. Next, do you mask your feelings with food to get instant comfort, then feel guilty? Learn how to listen to the emotions that are driving you to eat. Stop mindless cravings from controlling you. The plan to help you let go of your cravings and make peace with your food. Next. Dr. Oz unveils the busy woman's one-week recharge. In less than four minutes a day. And you know what? It's actually kind of fun. A plan to keep you going all day long. All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. Today, the thing too many of you feel guilty for having. Cravings. And you've shared your confessions. Hi, Dr. Oz. My name is Andrea, and I crave sweets, especially when I'm tired. At night, I get these cravings for a big, fat, juicy, buttery steak. I crave cheese all the time. Parmigiano Reggiano is my favorite. My cravings confession is carbs and comfort food. If I could have a biscuit and hash brown all day, every day, I'd be the happiest person ever. I crave pizza. I crave pizza in the morning. I crave it in the afternoon. The more toppings, the better. Transformational health expert and author Alexandra Jameson is here to reveal that cravings are not a sin. She says it's a secret language of cravings. What is that language? So our cravings are always just trying to tell us something is out of balance, that we need to address something. So they're not the enemy. They're actually how our body communicates with us. And if we learn how to listen to them, we can actually use them as our allies. 
an ally, your cravings. Yes. All right, here's the deal. Alexandra has a plan to help you let go of your cravings and make peace with food. We'll see if this works. First off, we want to, if all of us can do this, we're going to keep a cravings log. So you've got a piece of paper. This is your log, I understand? Yes, this was actually my log from when I started this whole experiment. I found that I needed to get clear about where they were starting, where were they coming from. So if I just wrote down when was I having a craving, what was it, what was I actually wanting, and how was I feeling? What emotions were I, was I experiencing in that moment? It's a lot of writing here. It's a lot of writing. <laughs> this is just one day. I had a lot of cravings. All right. A lot of cravings. So how are you going to translate what these cravings mean? How about your emotions especially? So when you start to feel the urge for something, just take a step back. Instead of reacting immediately to it, mm -hmm. take a moment to say, how am I feeling emotionally right now? What's going on? What triggered me to feel this way? And then notice how you feel after you have it. Do you feel better? Do you feel worse? Do you feel guilty? Are you talking in your head about yourself even in a worse way right now? This can help you put the pieces together about what parts of your life might need more attention. All right, so if we do this smartly, we'll be able to slowly correlate the cravings with some of those emotions. So you brought some of the more common ones with us. Yes, right? I did. So we're going to start off with the salty, crunchy potato chips. Yes, so the salty, crunchy cravings, that's a huge one. And you know, these are really satisfying. They Let's are. see what kind of craving this is commonly associated with. Anger. Anger, yes. It's very right. satisfying. We hold a lot of tension in our bodies that we don't let go of. I'm we feeling it from you. Yes. We can't tell off our <laughs> boss at the end of the day, right? We can't yell at our kids or we don't want to, but we hold on to it. It's very satisfying to crunch something like chips or cookies with nuts in them. So that is part of the emotion right. that can be associated with them. I'm getting scared here. All right, next, sweet like uh, cookies, things like that. Yes, so sweet sugar cravings, especially cookies, are oh. often associated with comfort. Now, you may have made cookies growing up with somebody that you really loved and that made you feel safe. And sugar is very satisfying and calming for a few minutes. Long term, it can get us into trouble. But at first, it helps us feel a little bit more calm. It always does. Yeah. And finally, things like mac and cheese, when they're creamy and gooey. Mm -hmm. The creamy, cheesy, fatty, carby cravings. Let's see if we can get this. Oh, oh my gosh. Ooh. It's, it's being it's lonely. lonely. Yeah, often, especially at the end of the night. I used to have the, the crackers and brie craving. It was the carbs and the fat. It was to help solve and, and quiet yeah. a feeling of disconnection, a feeling of loneliness. Yeah. Which is why so many folks mess up at night, and they mess up on things that really are sabotaging their program. And I don't see it as messing up. I see it as us automatically reacting to a craving without listening, taking a step back, and, and learning to help ourselves react to it in a healthier way. You want us to fine tune this whole process. So I, I get the emotions connected to certain kinds of foods, but if we fine tune it the way you're saying it, it, it actually forces us to slow down. So you say chew slowly, but that doesn't seem so easy to do. So chewing slowly is one of the easiest, best ways to transform your relationship to food and actually help your metabolism transform as well. But it's tedious. That's why people don't do it. It's boring. <laughs> it is, isn't <laughs> but it? it? But if we bring an element of pleasure to it, if we give ourselves that break that all of us really crave, we crave more time. We crave more space and ease. And if we can bring that to the dinner table, you know, you can either be stressed or you can digest but you can't do both at the same time. Most of us are coming to a dinner with a lot of stress and anxiety and we don't chew enough. But if you can have dinner with somebody who makes you feel good or have lunch next to a window or even outside, nature is naturally calming and just chew your food until it's almost liquid. You don't have to count to 30 or 50 times. That's just crazy making. I don't wanna add more number counting to your life. Just chew until it's mostly liquid. That actually gets most of the carbohydrate digestion happening in your mouth with saliva. So we asked a member of the audience, Irene, to experiment for a few days on this topic. How are you, Irene? Hi, Dr. Oz. So how did it go for you? Was it as simple as it sounding or was it more challenging? I'll tell you, it was, it was actually really eye-opener for me. Um, I can tell you I am stressed. I'm a working mom. Mm -hmm. I have young children, always on the go. I'm on the road. I'm in sales. So, you know, <laughs> my, my eating is fitting it in here and there. So I'll eat really quick. Could be five minutes, could be 10 minutes, and I'm used to eating a whole plate of food and not really having any leftovers. So going through <laughs> this exercise, I have to tell you, uh, I had to think about it. So I went to a separate room in my home, uh, so I wasn't distracted by my children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I sat there and I had to think about it in the beginning, to chew my food and keep chewing my food. And I can tell you, it took time. I took smaller bites. I'm used to taking larger bites. And lo and behold, when I actually felt Full. 
I had, I had extra food on my plate. So look at this. We actually have some of your pictures. Now, I'm assuming these are real pictures. Yes. That is you, yes. right? And uh, notice, by the way, your plate is no longer completely empty. The Empty Plate Club membership has been revoked for you. Uh, but you say you actually feel, you know, feel like you were okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, used to, I used to always feel hungry even after I had a big meal, eating yeah. really quick. But this time, I, I, uh, a couple of days that I did this, I felt full and I actually had extra food left over. You give your body a chance to catch up. It's wonderful advice. Thank you very much for doing that. Alexander's new book is called Women, Food, and Desires. Very, very well done. It's out now. We'll be right back. We all have occasional junk food cravings. What's yours? I stick to a pretty healthy diet, but every now and again, I have intense cravings for mozzarella sticks that come out of nowhere. Sometimes I give in and refocus. Share yours on Facebook.com slash Dr. Oz. Next, are you tired of spending a lot of money to keep yourself looking healthy and young? Learn how to heal all your biggest dry skin concerns. From your hair to your lips, even your hands and feet, we have the fastest fixes, all for under a dollar. Coming up next. Whoever said a doctor's visit isn't fun has obviously never been to the Dr. Oz show. Is that right? Make your appointment today. Go to DrOz.com slash tickets and sign up for free tickets. This February on the Dr. Oz show. Heart disease. You have the power to beat it. Put a little love in your heart. All month long, the ultimate guide to heart health. Feel young and energetic. Be there for your family. Stay active for your kids. You control your health. You control your destiny. The power to save your heart is in your hands. All this February on The Dr. Oz Show. You don't need to spend a lot of money to get healthy. Today I'm going to prove it with the fastest fixes for your dry skin, and they only cost one dollar. I'm going to reveal how to heal all your biggest dry skin concerns from your hair to your lips and even your hands and your feet. You guys interested in this? Yes. For a buck, I would be too. But I need a little of your help to get us there. Let me ask a question. Who's had a banana today? All the hands up bananas. Uh, what's your name? Come on down. In the red shirt. She's back. She's down. She's rushing the stage. Hi. How are you? How are you? How are you? Nice well, to meet you. What's your name? Samantha. Samantha. Okay. So your bananas are pretty commonly in our diet. What, yes. you, what did you have, by the way? I had a banana. I'm a runner, so I eat them every day. Oh, good for you. So. Do you ever have problems with your feet? Oh my! All the time, they're disgusting. My feet are cracked. I'm afraid <laughs> to get a pedicure because they're so ugly. My husband makes fun of me, so yeah. Have you had a pedicure recently? I did, and already a few days ago, they're already cracked again. Well, we check that out in a second, because the one dollar fast fix with bananas is for your dry feet. And it's a very simple little exam. I need you to sit down if you don't mind. Sure. Can you just pry off one of those boots if you don't want? Take your left boot off, it'll be easier. Oh, left? Okay, yeah. sure. So the, the banana, you know, the, it's not the banana you want, it's the peel, this part right here. Because inside the peel, if you put them on your rough patches, they'll actually help soften up the skin because they have vitamin A in them. And in addition to vitamin A, here, I'll, I'll be the doctor today. Okay. Oh, are you going like to make those are pretty feet, feet more appealing? They're, they're, yes, but they already... Oh, sure. <laughs> She'll be here all weekend long, appealing feet, please. All right, so you, you rub it on like that. The massage, you can get your husband to do this too, by the way. The massage will help. But you rub it on the areas uh, that are that'll dried out, the damaged skin. The vitamin A will bring a little moisture into it, helps the skin rejuvenate itself. The problem is you might slip like you would on a banana peel. Yeah. So to deal with that problem, we have these socks. So you put them on at night, okay. after your husband's massaged your feet, or if you have to do it yourself, do it yourself. Yeah. Put the sock on like this so you're safe. And then let it baste in there all night long. When you get up in the morning, it's gonna feel nice and smooth, like your face. You'll be very happy with Thank it. You, and you Dr. Keep Dr. Running. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Oz. Thank you very much. <laughs> all, right. all right, I need someone else to help with the dollar fix. Who's had mayo? Who had mayo next? You admit it, and she, I was just testing you. No, I'm kidding, come on up. See, I didn't think anyone would answer that question if I asked for mayo. Come on over. What's your name? Denise. Denise. Was it a good sandwich you had? Was it on whole yeah, it grain like, anyway? Yes, it was. It was a turkey and Munster sandwich with, on whole wheat with lettuce and tomato. She's just saying that. Please, I used to no, do No, really, really. I just had it around the block. All right. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to show you another use for mayo. It's, it's going to be a dollar fast fix, and it works for dry hair. Oh. How do you keep your hair so shiny and lovely with body? Um, well, I condition my hair every time I shampoo, and I give myself um, a deep conditioner once a month when I color my hair. So this is a tip that a lot of kids in college do, 
because it's so inexpensive, but we should all be doing it a lot. You can actually put mayo in your hair, but you're gonna use it a little differently. So you take a little scoop of it. May I put this in your hair? If you rub it in yourself. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. The audience gasped. I can hear them can, gasping as I said this. So, so no, my the, hair really is very dry at the end. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm well, curious our, to see if this works. It gets dry for a lot of reasons, but the, part of the reason is we don't have enough of the natural oils. There's oil in mayonnaise. So take a teaspoonful of it and spread it out through one part, then another teaspoon, sort of as much as your hair needs, and then just sit there with it and enjoy it for a few minutes. And then go in the shower for, you know, after 10, 15 minutes, and you can wash out with shampoo the way you always have. But just like deep conditioners, it'll give you the body that you desire at a fraction of the cost. Oh, it's good right. to know. Here, take that with you. Oh, thank with, you. For your, for your Munster and, and turkey, turkey sandwiches. Turkey Munster. And whole wheat. But whole wheat, ah. lettuce and tomato. Oh, lettuce and tomato. Lettuce and tomato. All right, another Mandara fix. Who needs the help here? How about milk? Who put milk in the morning cereal? Come on, come on down. I knew some people would do that. What is your first name? Rosemary. Rosemary. All right, stand right up here, Rosemary. The one dollar fix right there. At your corner here. I'm going to reveal this to you. Are you ready? Milk is a beauty treatment for your dry face. Really? Yes. Have you ever used milk for any treatments at all? No, only cleaning it up off the table. Yes, a lot of moms have. How many kids do you have? Two. Two. Congratulations. Thank so, you. So, dry face, something that fixes all, especially in the winter months. And if you're going to deal with it in a real reasonable way, you have to learn how to get off the old skin so the new skin can nourish itself in a very happy way and live on. So milk has exfoliant qualities in it, right? It has lactic wow. acid. So you take a, a dry cloth, soak it in the milk. If you make it cool, it might be a bit more interesting for your face. Okay. And I won't do it to you, but you literally rub, take the towel and leave it on your face. You can wipe it on if you want, but literally leave it there, sort of like in a spa treatment. And just enjoy yourself. The lactic acid will exfoliate the skin, leave it much more supple when you're done, and then you can wash it off as you wish. Wow. So you seem to want a little bit. Here. I do. Just lie back like that. Oh. Oh. It's you. It's your. Thank you. What do you think? It's, it's the right color, by the way, for you. It goes with your blouse. <laughs> it feels really cool. It's very cooling. It's very nourishing, too. Yeah. And it's, again, it's a very inexpensive, very effective treatment. It saves everyone money and makes you look beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right, one more. You have time for one more? Yeah. All right, who, uh, who had tea today with honey? Tea and honey. That's what I do every day. We have a couple people. Yeah, come on down, ma'am. Come on down. A tea and honey woman. After my, that's how I have my tea honey. all the time. Come on over here. So okay. let me ask you a question about your honey. Okay. So a lot of people put sugar in their tea. They put artificial sweeteners, which they shouldn't do in their tea. Why do you pick honey? Honey is healthier, and it tastes really good. It does taste good. <laughs> That's a very good thing to say, because our $1 fix is actually for dry lips. Mm -hmm. So the fact that it tastes good is a plus. Okay. Now, we're both going to do this. Here's yours. Here's mine. Okay. You just put a Q-tip or even your finger in a little bit of honey. So you take one little dab, and then go back in. No, no double <laughs> dipping with the honey. Okay. And then apply it like you would lip balm. Like a, yeah. oh, your lips are prettier than mine. <laughs> Those are nice lips. Thank you. Right. And, then, and get an extra dose right before bedtime. Okay. And so it can work while you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. And those lips are going to feel, because it has antibacterial properties and it helps with chapped lips, they're going to feel voluptuous. Awesome. Thank you know what? You. Let's blow a moisturized kiss to that camera. Ready? Mm -hmm. Come. Come back. Take care of me. Get close to me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Let everyone know we're going to be right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> She's right. keep your skin healthy and smooth. I take really hot showers every day and that can lead to dry skin. So when I'm done, I make sure to thoroughly cover my body with moisturizer. It really helps to keep my skin smooth. Share what you do on facebook.com slash Dr. Oz. Next, is your doctor asking the right questions when it comes to your heart? Are you receiving the proper tests and exercises to keep you safe from heart disease? Find out just how heart smart your doctor really is. The three questions you need to ask yourself and your doctor next. Dr. Oz unveils the busy woman's one-week recharge. In less than four minutes a day. And you know what? It's actually kind of fun. A plan to keep you going all day long. All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. February is Heart Month, and to celebrate together, let's take care of your ticker. So today... Is your doctor heart smart? It's a big question we're asking because I want to know, are they asking you the right questions to keep you safe from heart disease? So before the show, I polled this audience to find out what your doctor is doing. So let's go to the results. Question number one was, does your doctor take your blood pressure in both arms? 16%, one six percent of you said your doctor does this. Let me go to Linda, you were identified. How are you? Good, good. good. So does your doctor do this? No, he does not. Is he supposed to? 
Well, here's the thing. <laughs> there is a benefit, actually. If you look at the two arms together, you can tell if there's any blockage between the arms. If there's a blockage between the arms, there could be a blockage in other parts of your body, like in your head or your heart, your legs, elsewhere. So we're taught in medical school to at least once check it in both arms. Sometimes you're born with blockages, by the way. So it's important, and it's also a big tip off about blood pressure issues. So it's good to know that. Yeah, I'm borderline blood, you blood are. pressure, yeah. Imagine, when you go to the doctor's office, are you ever nervous? All the time. I have what they call white coat syndrome. Every time I know I'm going to go, my blood pressure spikes. Actually, right now it's spiking a little. Yes, I, think, you. I, I would think I would make you nervous, too. <laughs> you know, a little trick that we're, again, we're taught early in our practice, but we forget, but you ought to know about this, is if you feel rushed, your blood pressure will go up anyway. And when a doctor's coming in, you think you only have a few seconds to ask him key questions, and they're checking your blood pressure, you're getting nervous about the number, right. it throws you off. You can do this. Just say, can I take five minutes, either let's talk first, or just give you five minutes by myself to let my blood pressure go to where it normally is, then we'll check it. Otherwise, you'll be falsely high and get treated when you don't need to get treated. Should I ask him to do both now when I go in? Yes, ask okay. him to do both once, and then give, ask for a few minutes so you don't have the white coat syndrome Dr. Oz gave you. Okay. Blame me. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Here's, let's go this way. You know if your doctor is heart smart. Does your doctor include a blood glucose test? 59%, which is a good number, 59% said yes. Who's not having that? Who's doctor is not checking their blood sugar frequently? Anybody? Does it? No. Oh. My doctor does not check my glucose. He doesn't? No. So here's the thing. Blood sugar is important because it predicts diabetes. Even in young women, it's helpful in knowing that. And it actually, if you do have diabetes, is a very important risk factor for heart disease, probably four times more than if you didn't have diabetes. So it's something worth pushing for. In fact, most groups say you ought, ought to have a blood sugar check once every three years. Your blood pressure every year, you should do. Do it on your own in the mall if you have to. You don't have to go to a doctor. But for your blood sugar, you can get it done for free, and you know, people do free clinics, or have your doc check it. Oh, that's great. All right, thank, thank you, you, you very much. Yeah. All right, one more way to tell your doctor smart, about your heart, that is. Does your doctor ask you how many hours you sit per day? It's a really important question that doesn't get asked too much. In fact, 20% of you said yes. That means 80% are not getting asked this. So let me ask, let me pull the quote. Let me see. How many hours a day do you sit? I actually don't sit that much because I'm a teacher, so I'm oh, constantly good for you. moving around. So how many hours do you sit, you think? Uh, maybe two. Two, two. What do you think? We don't ask guys. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. How many hours of sleep? Sit, sit. Oh, like, sit. <laughs> are you paying attention? This is why I don't ask guys questions. They don't pay attention to their health. All right. I sit eight hours. A eight day. hours a day, yeah. and? Barely. Barely. So that's the deal. If we think about this, if you're sitting, it's a dramatic change in how your body thinks about the world. I'll give you a number. Four hours is the rule of thumb. Four hours or more sitting every day significantly increases the risk of heart disease. In fact, if you're an exerciser, it actually is probably as important as getting 20 minutes of exercise a day. Which means if you're exercising 20 minutes and you're sitting the rest of the day, you're not getting the benefit of getting up every few hours and standing. So let's just all do this. Everyone stand up right now. I want you guys to be the healthiest audience and the smartest audience. Right? And I want you, if you can, every couple hours, you know, I want you to get up and just walk for a few minutes just to get the blood flowing, change the hormones. You'll look better, too. Now you guys keep standing. I'm going to entertain you because I want you to enjoy yourselves. I'm going to talk a little bit about something different because it's time to put a little love in your heart. I've got some heartwarming facts about love, which I think you'll enjoy. So do you think humans made for life and you think we're the only ones who made for life? Those are the big questions we're always, always arguing about. Well, penguins are monogamous, just like we are. And guess what? Swans are too, wolves are, ducks, mountain lions are monogamous. So if they can do it, we can do it too. I want you to look at this happy couple. They, in fact, were monogamous. They're the voices of Mickey and Minnie Mouse. And they were actually married in real life, which I don't think many of us knew. I love this when two people are in love, like the Mickey and Minnie were. Their heart rates actually sync up which is pretty cool. Our heart rates literally become one, which is how we control ourselves electrically. That's how you can actually tell sometimes that you're in love. And did you know that when you look at someone that you love, your pupils, watch this video, will dilate up. So all the people in love in the audience, look in each other's eyes as you stand there and see if your eyes dilate. It's a way of checking your, <laughs> the, the amount of love they have for you. And finally, since we're talking about love, a kiss. On average, you'll spend 20,160 minutes of your life kissing. That's roughly two weeks of your life, but it's worth the investment. So what warms your heart? Tell me on Facebook.com slash Dr. Oz. I'll be right back. Dr. Oz is bringing healthy back. Ready to whip up one of his heart-healthy recipes? Always eat fish. It's delicious and healthy. Plus, my kids eat it, so that's a plus. But I love all your tips. We'll give these a try. Find a simple recipe for tonight's dinner on DrOz.com. 
next. Do you feel tension in your neck or shoulders? Are you spending hours staring at your phone every day? That smart device could be causing a serious new medical condition, and you may not even know it. Easy steps to avoid this strange but true syndrome you may be at risk for. Coming up. This February on the Dr. Oz Show. Heart disease. You have the power to beat it. Put a little love in your heart. All month long, the ultimate guide to heart health. Feel young and energetic. Be there for your family. Stay active for your kids. You control your health. You control your destiny. The power to save your heart is in your hands. All this February on the Dr. Oz Show. strange but true medical condition you all could have and not even know it. And it has to do with this, your smartphone. I want everyone to take out their phone right now. Take out your phones. I'm going to text one of you. I've got a number here. All right, who got a text? Who got a text? Oh, text me back. Let me see how you do it. She's texting me back very diligently, very focused on her texting. All right, I got it. Come on down. You're the right person. This is... Kashana, who agreed to join us. Thank you, Kashana. Thank you. How are you? Fine, you. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. So you can put your phone away for one second. Okay. We'll bring it back in a minute. So there's a very interesting thing we're talking about today. It's a medical condition most people don't acknowledge yet, but it's very true. It's called text neck. Have you heard of it? Yeah. No. Well, kind of, sort of. I get a lot of cramps in my neck just by doing it. You do? Yeah, a lot. Let me relax you a little bit. Like this? Is that oh, good, like that? Yeah. That's exactly where you get it? Yes. Okay. Let's go over and find out why that's happening, because I'm not always going to be there to massage your neck. <laughs> so this is you texting me. Now, notice a couple of things, everybody, right? Notice how you're holding it. You're cramped over. Mm -hmm. When you actually first start, you're tilted to the side, right? Mm -hmm. And notice all the tension it's going to put. Now, the question is, how much does this unnatural load wear you out? How much of a problem is it for your neck? How much does it cause wear and tear in the muscles around your spine, pinched nerves, things you don't want to deal with? Mm -hmm. So I did a little homework for you. Okay. You want to find out? Yes. A little scared? All right. <laughs> Here's what happens. Let's take a look at a normal scenario. Your head normally straight up above you, right? For every 15 degrees your head tilts forward, you actually have a bigger burden. Oh. So it, when it's straight above your head, above your shoulders, your head weighs like a bowling ball, 10 to 12 pounds. Okay. At just 15 degrees, it's a little bit over, it's 27 pounds, 27 pounds of weight. Wow. That's like seven dictionaries. Wow. That's a lot of weight. All right? And let's go down here to the extreme, because you can tilt over more and more and more and more. And by the time you get over here, 60 degrees, which is about where you were, yeah. right? It's about 60 pounds. That's like carrying an eight-year-old on your head. Wow, that's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot, lot of weight. A lot of weight. <laughs> right? Now, they may be happy, but you won't be happy. <laughs> no, right? I wouldn't. So then the question is, how often do we do this? How many hours do you think you spend texted over like that with that text neck set up? Honestly, Dr. Oz, like, if you look at my phone, you wouldn't believe how many text messages I get throughout the day. Like, I get a lot. Yeah, like, give me a number. Oh. What, do you think, what do you think in a year? Everyone think in their own mind, how many hours a year do you spend texting? I'm going to give you the average right now. I'm texting all day, every day. So, like so at work, school. 100 hours, 150 hours a year? I would say thousands. A thousand? Thousands. Right. <laughs> Guess what the average is? 1,400 hours a year. Wow. Texting, 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 texting. 1,400 hours. Wow. That's a lot of pressure. 60 pounds is too much even for one hour. Yeah. Much less... 1,400 hours, which is, again, the average, which means half of us are more than that. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to your seat here because we're going to talk about what this texting does to us all the time. And I'm not against texting, you know, I, well, except when you're driving, of course. But sit over here, and I want you to go back to that position that you were in when you were texting me back. Okay? It was like this. Over like this. And everyone get your phones out. You all start texting like this. Get down in that position. Okay. Now, what you notice, I hope, is not just your neck, but your breathing. Yeah. Because when you're hunched over like that, do you ever figure that out? Yeah, I'm getting tightness. Just yeah. So when you come over, you're not supposed to be able to breathe like this. You go, <laughs> in fact, it turns out it's not easy for a reason. Everyone tries. Hunch over as much as you can and take a deep breath in. Everyone at home do the same thing. <laughs> All right? It's tough to do. Actually, everyone sits straight now. Good posture, like a little string from the top of your head pulling up, Kashana. Right? That actually dramatically increases the amount of oxygen you can pull in. And of course, everything feels better. When you don't have this posture, like this all the time, you'll get headaches and you'll get drained of energy because your body's trying to tell you something. All right, so I'm going to, everyone right now, take your phones and text this message out. This is what the tips are going to be for text neck. It's how to avoid it. Send it to people you care about. First is proper position, mm -hmm. right? You want your shoulders back. You want your ears above your shoulders. If you do it like this, good posture. All down the road. Oh, a very well-postured front row here, all right? Mm -hmm. Second thing is you want to hold the phone at eye level, but like 
like a T-Rex position. You know how they have short little arms, the dinosaurs T-Rex? Right in front of you like this, right? That way your head is not pinched over, it's up looking forward on you, okay. right? And finally, every 20 minutes, I want you to take a little break, which I know you can do, and then drop your head back and stretch it out like this, all the way around to get back that flexibility that you know you want to have in there. Because remember, you got 1,400 more hours texting you can do. <laughs> yes. so, thanks very much, we'll be right Thank back. Thank you. <laughs> all new Dr. Oz. I go to bed late and I wake up early. I really need something to get me going. Sound familiar, folks? Yeah. Reclaim your energy. Dr. Oz unveils the busy woman's one week recharge. In less than four minutes a day. And you know what? It's actually kind of fun. A plan to keep you going all day long. I stand on my feet for nine hours a day. It just gives me that extra push. All new odds. That's coming up tomorrow. Today we're going to look at some old remedies in medicine just to see how far we have come. So look at this ad. Can you believe this? Cigarettes were once touted as a treatment for asthma. They really were. At least old Dr. Batty had the sense not to recommend them for kids under six. Isn't that pretty cool? Where's that Dr. Batty came from? Not recommended for children under six. You can see here it's at the fine print at the bottom of that bottle, but I want you to watch this one. This is really scary. Parents were encouraged to give their teething tots cocaine toothache drops. I'm just happy we have pacifiers and cold teething rings now. That's incredible that that stuff was actually allowed to be sold. Okay, now it's time for in case you missed it. First off, we talked a lot about how to decipher the secret language of craving and to translate literally what's going on. What do those cravings really mean for you? So, for example, we learned that mac and cheese, which you often will crave when you need a sort of a feeling of comfort because you're lonely and dissatisfied. So when you have that loneliness in your life, the question is, are you going to wolf down this whole plate of, of mac and cheese? What you want to do is at least give yourself a little chance, give your body a chance to catch up. So eat the stuff slowly. You can do that by chewing it more, but that's sort of mundane to do. So find things to do. Look out the window, talk to a friend, connect with someone. That way at least you'll get the comfort by, if you, by using a medication, i.e. food, but not too much of it. Next, I love a good bargain, and I got a bunch of $1 fast fixes for your dry skin. One that I particularly enjoyed was the banana peel. Uh, which works well for the feet. Again, you're gonna throw the peel away anyway, but on dry feet, you can rub it on those patches and then put on a pair of these socks. I don't want you walking around because you'll slip and get mad at me, uh, but put these socks on, do it at night. Uh, these socks look better when you're in, under the covers than when you're walking around around the streets. And by the time the morning comes around, your feet will be nice and soft and supple. Next, a strange but true medical condition you may not even know you have, it's this. We actually talked to a woman in the audience today who has text neck like so many of us get. Texting like this may put an unnatural strain on your spine. And unfortunately for a lot of folks, 1400 hours of this causes lots of aches and pains in your back. So one tip to avoid it is to hold your phone like a dinosaur T-Rex might, like this. Short little arms, that keeps your head up, keeps your posture better, and that way your head weighs a lot less on your shoulders than it would otherwise. And finally, I want you to be careful of dubious people online that make it seem like I'm endorsing their products because I don't. To see a full list of our trusted sponsorship partners, please go to DrOz.com and I'll see you next time.